This episode of New Product Rundown features Polar Lights Voyager, Edward Sopwith Camel, New News Porsche 935, and Tacom's Weasel. New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. And by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits, details, masks, decals, and more. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the latest kits and other modeling goodness. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell. We've got a packed show for you today. That's right. Let's start with a kit I'm really excited to see, and that's Polar Light's 1 1000th scale USS Voyager from the Star Trek franchise. Now, I really enjoyed Voyager. It wasn't my absolute favorite in the franchise, but it warmed up to it in the last seasons. What about you? I was more of a DS9 kind of guy. I liked Captain Janeway, Chakotay, Bolana, but really DS9 was where it was at for me. DS9's good too. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. The primary hull comprises the upper half with sharply molded surface windows, phaser arrays, escape pod hatches, and upper sensor palette, and the lower half with sensor and phaser arrays, cargo hatches, and the aero shuttle. The secondary hull builds from six parts with left and right sides for the upper half, the lower half, the upper section of the shuttle bay landing threshold and the extension for the warp nacelles, the front with the housing for the main navigational deflector, and a long spine part that connects the primary and secondary hulls. The warp nacelles come in halves, and thanks to hinges, they are movable if you want to pose the Intrepid class starship in warp flight on the supplied stand. Also provided are landing gear legs if you want to pose it on the ground. Clear plastic provides warp nacelle details, the navigational deflector, lights, and major windows. Painting instructions are shown on the side of the box, and I appreciate that they call out specific parts for the colors in question. The decal diagrams are separate and easy to follow when applying the scores of tiny stencils and panels. So Star Trek Voyager had one of the prettiest opening uh, sequences of all of the Star Trek TV shows, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, so, very, very impressive. If you're interested in building Voyager, which is an excellent looking ship. One of the best, I think. This is the kit for you. Next from Edward, it's a 148 scale dual combo limited edition kit of the Sopwith Camel. Now the Sopwith Camel, I think, is one of the coolest planes to come out of World War I. And something to note that this is not the same as the kit that Edward released previously of the Sopwith Camel. No, it's not. Let's take a look in the box. The surface detail on the fuselage parts is amazing, with fine rivets on the metal skinned forward fuselage and stitching and stretched fabric on the rear. Optional starboard halves are given for different versions, as are optional upper decks with the cockpit openings. Optional upper wings reflect differences in the size of the cutouts above the cockpit. Wing surface detail features rib stitching and leading edge stretched effects. The ailerons are separate, as are the elevators and rudder. This kit is all about versatility, with options to fit one of four engines, Bentley, Clerget, Gnome, or Larone, pushing one of two propellers. Different cowls are provided to fit the engines. Cockpit detail includes framing, floor, seat and instrument panel, fuel tank, and controls. Optional landing gear struts and wheels are provided, and the interplane and cabane struts are thin. The twin machine guns have separate breeches, and bombs can be slung under the fuselage. The instructions include a detailed rigging diagram. In addition to optional windscreens and a gun sight, clear plastic provides the inspection windows for the wing control lines. Masks are included for the clear parts and the wheels. Photo etch metal supplies optional instrument panel and seat details, seat belt, control wire horns, and weapon and prop details. As usual, Edward provides a wide choice of marking options, 10 in all, including two for fictional pilot and adventurer Biggles. There are numerous Royal Flying Corps and Royal Naval Air Service Camels, and even a couple of American planes. As Tim said, the Camel is a very pretty airplane, and this is a really nice looking kit and should turn into nice, well, actually two nice replicas. So what if, uh... What if I took this kit and put Snoopy in one of them? You could do that. You just have to put the Red Baron in the, one of the triplanes. I think I might be able to do that. I can't wait to see it done. 
From Nunu and Platts, we have this 124 scale Porsche 935. This kit represents the winner of the 1979 24 Hours of Le Mans endurance race. This curbside model has a mostly one-piece body with sharply molded contours and open vents on the fenders. The rear wheel flares are separate parts. The big rear wing builds from several pieces to capture the complex shape. Molded in black plastic, the chassis pan includes the lower part of the engine, to which is attached a detailed end with belts and pulleys, intake and exhaust manifolds, and transmission with suspension arms and rear axle and springs. Up front, suspension details include springs and axles, steering tie rod and rack. The axles connect to disc brakes and to two-part wheels and vinyl tires. Interior detail includes a tub, side panels, seat with frame, engine cover, roll cage, dashboard and steering wheel, shifters, and pedals. Clear parts, including the windshield, side and rear windows, and lights, feature sharply molded rubber seals and are designed to fit from outside and make masking easy. The minimal chrome plated parts provide light reflectors and mirrors. Decals provide stripes, numbers, sponsors, and contingencies for the Kremer Racing Porsche that Klaus Ludwig drove to victory in 1979. The last kit we had from Nunu and Platts built up really well. Yeah, and this one looks really good in the box and I suspect it'll be just the same as that. Finally, here's a big scale kit of a diminutive vehicle, Tacom's 1 16th scale Visal Mark 20. Now interestingly, this tank was designed to be air droppable, but it didn't prove to be. Yeah, unfortunate that. The hull on this thing is about as long as a 1 35th scale King Tiger. It shows you how small it really is. The lower section includes reinforcing ridges underneath and suspension attachment points on the sides. The upper hull has recessed panel lines and hatch outlines, patches of non-skid texture, rivets, and engine grills. The remainder of the major hull parts include the rear plate, bow, fenders with separate mud flaps, and final drive housings. The suspension comprises torsion bars that attach to road wheel arms, two-part road wheels, idlers and return rollers, drive sprockets, and more. The workable tracks build from rubber block sections, pins, and guide teeth. A jig is provided to help assemble the tracks. Other hull details include tools, driver's hatch, exhaust, and antennas. The two-part turret has a separate commander's hatch and supports the 20 millimeter auto cannon with detailed receiver and breech, ammo cans, and flexible vinyl belts of rounds. To give the model life and a sense of scale, the kit provides a commander who can be posed sitting in the open turret hatch. The clear plastic supplies lights and periscopes, and there are engine screens, mud flat brackets, and exhaust heat shields on the photo etched metal fret. Decals and color diagrams cover four German Army visals in NATO three color camo. Two are marked as part of K4, the NATO led peacekeeping operation in Kosovo and one for I-4, the implementation force in Bosnia. 1 16th scale, almost big enough for you to get in and drive. Indeed. This is a really nice addition to that scale, which has become increasingly popular. Look for reviews of it, along with Voyager, the Porsche, and the Camel at finescale.com in the near future. And while you're there, make sure to check out our videos, FSM at the Workbench, and Scale Model Basics. And visit combathobbystore.com for all your tools, books, puzzles, clothing, and these stunning 2022 calendars featuring warbirds and muscle cars. I'm Tim Kidwell. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll be back next month with more great kits. See you then. I had to get the last word. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Voyager opening credits were the greatest. The greatest. It's a great looking ship, and you know what? It's a great looking ship. <laughs> While you're there, stop by combathobbystore.com where you can pick up tools, books, something. What else is there? Well, there's also these great 2022 calendars featuring <laughs> we warbirds so well. <laughs> and muscle cars. <laughs> tools, books, books puzzles. puzzles. Good job, Aaron. Okay. Well, thanks, Tim. You're welcome. Let's go. <laughs> You just had to get the last word in, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs>